Hello, in this lecture we will work on journalizing transactions right here. We're going to journalize those transactions here and then we're going to post them to three different places. One being the quick post to the trial balance in this entry section so we can see the activity in a quick and easy way and see what the effect is on the trial balance. Then we're also going to post it to the subsidiary ledger. So these are going to affect accounts receivable much of the time and accounts receivable is representing what is owed to us and therefore we also need to know who owes us the money. So we're going to start recording that to the subsidiary ledger which will be in order by client or customer in this case. And then we're also going to record it to the general ledger so we want to see all of the type of activity that would happen when we're recording these transactions focusing on the accounts receivable cycle. So we're going to see the quick uh, reaction here to the trial balance directly, analyze that, then recognize the fact that we do want to sort this by customer in this case, and that would be done through the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. And then of course we have the general ledger, and we're only including the general ledger here for the accounts receivable account. So we're not going to record uh, every general ledger account. Of course, every other account here would have a general ledger account, but we're focusing in on accounts receivable and therefore we're just going to record the uh, general ledger account for receivable to distinction to have a distinction between that and the subsidiary ledger here. So of course we have our trial balance right here and that's going to have our assets that are going to be in green. We've got our yellow or orange or our liabilities, the equity account in the light blue, and then we got the revenue and the expenses on the bottom. We know that we are in balance because the debits minus the credits equal zero and we're going to post our activity here. We also can see that net income is here. This is actually income, not a loss, because it's the revenue less the expenses. And there we have the income here. And then of course we have our accounting equation up here where the assets are the green ones. And then the liabilities. Notice there's no negative sign here because we flipped the sign. And then all of this is the equity. That's the equity. All right. So now let's record these out. So the first one says perform work on account and invoice the client and the client is Smith in this case. So we got 35,000. We did work, we invoiced the client. So is cash affected? In this case, no, because we did the work on account and we sent out an invoice, did not yet get the cash. Therefore, we did get something. We got an IOU, that IOU being accounts receivable. So we're gonna say accounts receivable is what we have received in this transaction. And that uh, is an asset account. It's just in under cash and assets have debit balances. We need to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to debit the account statement. I'm going to copy that. Right click, copy, one, two, copy. And then I'm going to put my cursor in C5 and then right click and paste it one, two, three. So we're pasting just the values, not the formulas, just the values here. We'll keep the uh, cells looking like they are in that blue color. And then we're going to put the amount, 35,000. Every debit is going to have an equal number of credits. For every transaction, we're going to have at least two accounts. So we're going to have a credit here. We will be representing the credits with negative numbers or bracketed numbers in the Excel worksheet. So we're going to type negative 35,000. And I'm going to hit enter. And of course, it'll format that cell for us with brackets because of the formatting of the worksheet. Then we just need to know what this uh, account should be. And why are people going to pay us 35000 Because we did work and earned revenue. And we could call this, depending on the type of company, revenue. We could call it incomes. We could call it sales. We could call it fees earned. Uh, it just depends on the type of company. But it is going to be a revenue type account. And of course, it'll be down here in the revenue area. I mean, it's under the capital section on the uh, trial balance. So I'm going to copy that. Right click, copy that. We're going to paste that on the bottom. Credits traditionally go on the bottoms. We are in cell C6. Right click and paste 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to post this now to basically three different places. I'm going to post it here to the trial balance so we can see a quick, easy beginning and end trial balance. Then we'll post it to the subsidiary ledger, at least the receivable side of it. And then we will post the receivable side of it to the general ledger. So let's do that now. We're going to say the receivable is here. So here's the receivable, it's the second account, so we are in I6, and say equals, and then we're going to point to that 35,000. What's going to happen? We'll go up here, it will go out of bounds by the 35,000. So the 35 represents that customers owe us 35, and now we are out of bounds by the 35. We will then post the revenue in I14, 
So I14 equals, I'm going to point to that 35,000 credit. What will happen? The credit will go up in the credit direction because we're doing the same thing to it. We'll be back in balance. Net income is going to go up from the transaction. So we're recording revenue. Revenue is being recorded when we did the work, not necessarily when we get the money because we haven't gotten any money yet. So now we're going to record that same accounts receivable to the subsidiary ledger here. So we need to record it uh, by customer. Why? Because oftentimes when we look at the trial balance, we're going to say, who owes us money or how much do people owe us? People owe us 35,000. The next question we're going to have is, well, <laughs> when are we going to get that money and uh, who owes it to us? Let's call those people. And to do that, we're going to need to know the subsidiary ledger by uh, the accounts receivable by customer using the subsidiary ledger. So here we have Smith. We're just going to record that same debit side to this account here in the subsidiary ledger. I'm just going to say equals and that's going to point to that 35,000 again. Now, also we're going to have this stuff in the general ledger. So I'm not going to post the entire general ledger out, but just to recognize that there is a difference. We're talking about something different in the subsidiary ledger than what we have seen in the general ledger. The general ledger would be posting transactions in order uh, by date or the order of the transaction. So we can post the same thing in the AR subsidiary um, general ledger. So we could say that this equals that same 35,000. And we see that the 35,000 in this section is going to be the same information that will be recorded here. It's just that it'll be recorded slightly differently. Right here it's only recorded by date. Right here it's recorded by customer. And of course the end of it, we have the 35 here. 35 is what adds up all the customers. That ties out to the trial balance. All right, next transaction, we're gonna scroll over here and we're gonna say that received cash on account from client Smith for work performed in the past. So now Smith paid us this 35,000. So that would be the natural transaction that would happen hopefully sometime in the future, we'd get a check in the mail. Therefore, we're gonna ask our questions, is cash affected? Yeah, we received money, we got cash. Cash has a debit balance, we need to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm gonna copy the cash. We're going to put that in cell C8. So I'm going to right click and put that in C8. And how much did we receive? 35,000 because that's the, that's what we build them for, 35,000. And so we're going to credit the same amount. So there's going to be an equal number of debits and credits. And then we're going to say, well, and uh, why did they pay us 35,000? Because we did work, but we did work in the past. So we're not going to credit the receivable account. We already did the work in the past. They owe us, of course, the 35000 that we put right in the receivable. Now they paid us that. They no longer owe us that. Therefore, that 35000 debit there needs to go down. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a debit. Therefore, we need to credit it to make it go down. We already knew that because we debited cash. So that's where the credit's going to go. It's going to make the receivable go back down to zero. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in C9, right click and paste 123, values only in C9. Recognize what is happening here. We're just getting a better asset, cash, and we're losing the worser asset, the accounts receivable. I know that may not be a word, but it sounds good. So the receivable is going down, cash is going up, and uh, no effect on revenue for this transaction. So let's post it out and see what happens. We're going to go up here to I5, I5 equals, and we're going to point to that 35,000. What's going to happen? Cash will go up by 35,000 because a debit and a debit makes a debit go up in the debit direction to 603,000. Then accounts receivable. There's something in it here. I can see it in the formula bar. Of course, D5 is in there. That's the D5 here. In order to post to it, I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus and then point to this uh, 35,000 here. And now we see there's two things in there. There's the 35 debit, the 35 credit. One's a positive, one's a negative, one's a debit, one's a credit. That's gonna make it go down to zero again. So even though we have a zero there, we can see what's in there. And I like to use these icons to point to them. And we can see, okay, that makes sense. It went up and went down. And if you wanna know where those icons are, they are in the uh, formulas tab and they are in the formulas auditing and here they are here. So then I can turn them off with this thing here. All right, so we're gonna also post those out to the subsidiary ledger. 
And so we're going to say, no one owes us any money right now, therefore we have to reflect that in the subsidiary ledger, meaning Smith doesn't owe us any money anymore. So we're going to post that same activity in M10. So this equals the 35000 and that means Smith no longer owes us. So this would be the normal activity within a receivable account, of course. It goes up, and then hopefully they pay us. It goes down. We invoice them. We got a check in the mail. That's what should it should look like. If we just look at that in the general ledger, we'll post the same activity to the general ledger. Again, we're not going to post all the accounts, of course, to the general ledger. We would be posting both the general ledger uh, cash and receivable in um, real life, we're doing the full problem, but we're just looking at the receivable, the accounts receivable GL account, general ledger account, and we are in the credit side. So we're going to say this equals that same credit, so same activity by date. So we don't know who necessarily by this 35, by this general ledger account, but we can see that it went up, when it went down. We could probably make a safe bet that that's the same client, and it may not be, of course, right next to each other in this activity. We could have other sales involved, but that's the type of activity we expect to see in the receivable account much of the time. So now, of course, we have zero here. The subsidiary ledger adds up to zero, and that's what's on the trial balance as well. Next one, perform work on account and invoice the client Adams. All right, so we're gonna do work on account. So is cash affected? Well, we did work on account, is cash affected? And answered no, because we did it work on account and we issued an invoice. When we issue an invoice, that's because we did work and therefore we earned uh, revenue and we have received we believe we've received the intangible asset of an IOU called accounts receivable so accounts receivable is an asset has a debit balance just like cash it needs to go up because people owe us more money how do we make it go up we do the same thing to it which in this case would be another debit so we're gonna copy the receivable I'm gonna right click copy that I'm gonna put that in C11 right click and paste it one two three the amount being for 14,000 in this case, if we debit something.